What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over 7 unique keyword research tips in about 10 minutes. So we're going to get right into it. Tip number 1 is to research each keyword on your list to see what pages are currently ranking high on Google. So when you create a keyword research list, much like this one here, what you want to do is take some of your individual keywords, for example, I'll take this keyword farmhouse bedding, and you want to see what is actually ranking on the first page of Google, and you can even look at other search engines as well, like Bing, you can look at something like YouTube, but if we come over here to Google and we look at farmhouse bedding, you can see right here, so we have Amazon, we have Kohl's, we have Target, we have Bed Bath & Beyond, Wayfair, so we get down here to Piper Classics. All of these different pages here are just listing of products. So your e-commerce websites, when people click on them, they're going to see a listing of products for sale related to farmhouse bedding. Now to give you some different examples, let's just say I want to rank for the keyword types of flowers. So we come in here, we scroll down, you can see these are more list type posts. So right here, 50 most popular types of flowers. We have lists of 300 flower names, A to Z. Now the other thing is if you are using a tool like Keyword Surfer, as we scroll down here, you can actually see how many words are in each of these blog posts. So it helps you get an idea of how long you should probably write a blog post in order to rank high. At the very least, you should see some of these as a threshold. You don't need to write a 19,000 word article, but you probably do need to have at least 2,000, at least 1,000 words to rank on the first page for a search term like this. Now, last but not least, let's just look up something like best travel backpack. You're going to see here, all of these examples are a list of some of the most popular travel backpacks rather than something like your standard e-commerce listing of products. So understanding what ranks for each keyword could help guide what types of content or what types of pages you're going to create on your website so that you can rank high as well. Now tip number two is going to be to focus on long tail keywords if you want to rank for a popular short tail keyword. So we're going to come over here to the Google Keyword Planner to show some of these examples. And let's just say I want to rank for the keyword farmhouse decor. So if we scroll down here, you can see this has average monthly searches, almost 91,000. But as we scroll down here, these are all very popular keywords. But what you want to do is come down here and get into this about 300 to 500 range and look at all of these different long tail keywords. So something like farmhouse fall mantle decor, farmhouse shutter wall decor. So all of these are different keywords that we can target on our website, and it's going to be much easier to rank for something like farmhouse entryway decor, farmhouse lemon kitchen decor. It's going to be much easier to rank for these keywords, and there's still plenty of average monthly searches to drive traffic to our website. And what's going to happen in the long run is it becomes easier to rank for something like farmhouse decor on Google if we are targeting keywords like farmhouse shutter decor, farmhouse Easter decorations. So these are all different keywords we want to target. And the best way to, to actually rank for that short tail keyword is to focus on some of the long tail variations. Next is going to be tip number three. And I've gone over this in the past, but in case you're not doing it already, so keyword mapping. You can organize your keywords by mapping them to website pages. So if we come down here to our keyword list again, we're looking at all these different examples. One of the things you might want to do is say, okay, for farmhouse bar stools, what is the page on my website that I'm actually targeting this keyword with? So in this case, I could come over to my website and we can come to our farmhouse bar stools page. And this is the actual page that is targeting this keyword. So what I could do is copy this URL and then all you want to do is enter it here in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets or wherever you're actually organizing your keywords. And you want to do this for all of these different keywords that we're targeting. And what it helps you do is in the long run as you are targeting a lot of different keywords, especially some of these long tail keywords here. So let's just say I'm creating a page for farmhouse kitchen wall decor. I can create a separate URL for this individual keyword than I would for farmhouse wall decor. So it allows you to target a lot of different keywords by actually mapping the pages on your website that are targeting those short tail and long tail keywords that you want to rank for. And to take this one step further, as we are focusing on some of these different long tail keywords, so for example, if I come to Google, I search farmhouse bar stools, you can see a lot of these down here are some different types of long tail keywords. So black farmhouse bar stools, white farmhouse bar stools, backlist farmhouse bar stools, those can all be separate categories on my website. And then what I can do is just make sure I'm mapping the pages on my website to those other keywords so that I can continue to rank for them as well. 
Okay, so next is gonna be tip number four. Tip number four I'm gonna do pretty quickly, but enter your top competitors into the Google Keyword Planner. If you go to spyfoo.com, enter your own website here, it's gonna come up with some of your organic competitors. So you can take your top organic competitor here and enter them directly into the Google Keyword Planner. You don't need to create an account or anything to get this page. You can also use the true competitor tool through Moz. So this is a pro tool, but if you do create a free Moz account, they will give you two search queries every single month where you can enter a domain and it will show you all of your top competitors and you'll find who you're actually competing with. And then all you need to do is go to the keyword planner and enter that website directly into the Google keyword planner and you can find a lot of their top keywords and it gave me 261 keyword ideas. So I can go through this and try to find some of the keywords that I'm not targeting already that antiquefarmhouse.com is ranking for. So it gives me some different opportunities to try to get some traffic. All you need to do is when you're searching, instead of starting with keywords, start with a website, enter the website here, use the entire site and click on get results and it's that simple. Okay, so next is tip number five. So if you are running a Google ads campaign, what you can do is use your search terms report for more ideas. So go into an individual ad group if you're running a Google Ads campaign. So you can see I have a search campaign here. I'm gonna be using this for a lot of tutorials soon. But let's just say I come into this farmhouse quilts ad group. So I need to find more long tail keywords related to farmhouse quilts. So what I can do is I'm looking at the last 30 days, click on my search terms report. And what you wanna do is find search terms and rank them by clicks and impressions. So as we see here, what are driving the most impressions? So country quilts, country quilt sets. You can see a lot of things for king size. There's gonna be queen size down here, twin size. So right here, feathered farm quilts. That's a keyword I've never targeted before, so it's something I can try to target on my website. Vintage farmhouse quilts, so another long tail keyword variation. Modern farmhouse quilts. So you can get a bunch of different ideas here and things that I'm not already targeting. And that's basically what you wanna do. So country patchwork quilts. I'm sure farmhouse patchwork quilts is also a popular keyword. So it allows you to find more and more keywords to target with the content on your website. So if you are running a Google Ads campaign, use that search terms report to see what is actually triggering your advertisements because it's gonna be very relevant keywords, especially in my case, I'm targeting a lot of phrase match keywords. So with phrase match, it's gonna find some very similar keywords and you're gonna see all of them in the search terms report. So that gives you a lot of different ideas for when you are optimizing for search engine optimization as well as your Google Ads campaigns. Okay, tip number six is gonna be a very quick one. So use your top blog posts to expand on your content ideas. So for this example, I'm actually gonna use my website beachfrontdecor.com. So with this, two of my top five blog posts, 101 beach themed bathroom ideas, 101 beach themed bedroom ideas. So you can see right here, this post alone drives a ton of traffic every single month. It's based on all the other pages on my website. This is one of the more popular pages. Now a ton of traffic maybe isn't, isn't accurate, but uh, it gives me an idea to be able to say, okay, 101 beach theme kitchen ideas, 101 beach theme living room ideas, 101 beach theme entryway ideas, porch ideas, patio ideas. So all of these different keywords that I can target, seeing what is already ranking as you go through your keyword list and you do create your keyword map, you might say, okay, the page I created for this specific keyword is doing very well. Let me copy that strategy for the other content that I'm creating. So number six, using your top blog post to expand on your different content ideas and expand on the keywords you're targeting based on what content is working for you. Tip number seven and last but not least, so sometimes when you're building this large keyword list, the thing that we kind of forget to do is make sure we're creating high quality content for all these different keywords. Now in this case, content is going to be product listing pages, basically e-commerce website product pages. So if I'm trying to rank for something like farmhouse bedroom furniture, then what I want is a huge selection of different types of farmhouse bedroom furniture sets, headboards, all sorts of things that you're gonna find in a bedroom. So you wanna make sure, for example, if I'm targeting the keyword farmhouse bar stools, it's a very popular keyword. If I'm sending traffic from my Google Ads campaign to that page, if I'm trying to rank with this page, what I need to do is make sure that I have a ton of different subcategories here, a lot of different unique products, make sure I have really good product descriptions, and make sure people come to my page knowing that this is going to be the best resource on the internet for farmhouse bar stools. So a lot of times we create these large keyword lists and we forget that we really need to 
create this high quality content for every single keyword we're targeting. And sometimes it might take us several days, a week, several weeks to even complete a piece of content or complete a product listing page so that we're ranking high in Google. So don't focus on saying, okay, I need to target 10,000 keywords. You need to focus on saying, today I'm going to target Farmhouse Entryway and I'm going to make sure I create the best resource on the entire internet so that I rank high on Google and other search engines. So number seven, make sure you're focusing on content creation, page optimization, landing page optimization, because it's more important than just building a list of a ton of short tail and long tail keywords. So if you have any questions about some of these keyword research tips, try to give some unique tips that you're not going to see anywhere else. So again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.